welcome to my video. This video is all about solid state drives or SSDs. Now you may have heard of SSDs, in fact you may be very familiar with SSDs, but the question is do you want one? Well, it's almost certainly a yes, and that's plainly because an SSD is so much quicker than a normal drive. And if it's a lot quicker, it means that your computer is going to run a lot quicker. But let's go into a bit more detail and have a look at what an SSD actually is. So if I do put one of these SSDs in my computer, what's it actually going to do? Well, if I turn my computer on now and leave it going on in the background, the answer will become quite clear. But an SSD you'll get in a box like this, and it's a 2.5 inch hard drive. So much like your traditional hard drive, it stores all your data on it. But the difference is that it runs a lot quicker and it has no moving parts whatsoever. So it's got no moving parts, which means it's going to be a lot more durable, but it's going to run your programs a lot, lot quicker. As you can see, the computer's booted in around 10 or 15 seconds. Now an SSD can be put in either a laptop or a desktop computer. Because it's a 2.5 inch drive, it means it'll go on your laptop. But if you do want to put it in your desktop power, then you may need an adapter. So if you decide you want your computer to run a lot quicker, then what SSDs will I recommend? The two best SSDs on the market at the moment, from a price performance perspective, is the Samsung SSD 840 and the OCZ Vertex 4. And while the advantage to SSDs is that they are really quick and way quicker than the traditional hard drives that you already have, there are a couple of downsides to getting an SSD. Now, the most obvious one is that you're getting a lot less space for your money. You can buy a 500 gigabyte hard drive for less than 50 pounds these days, whereas if you want to buy a 500 gigabyte hard drive, you're looking at over 300 pounds. The normal sort of space you're after is around 120 gigabytes, and that will give you plenty of space for your OS and plenty of space for all your programs. But if you are looking to store additional stuff, then you're going to need a higher one, which is going to cost you more. But if you're not really going to put many programs on, or just going to have your OS and maybe Microsoft Word and a few extra programs, then you could only use a 60 gigabyte SSD if you like. One thing to consider is that the OS will take up a lot of space on your drive, as well as some other hidden stuff that goes on behind the doors, so you won't actually have as much space as you think, because Windows uses extra space. Now you're going to want to put your operating system on the SSD. If you're starting a brand new computer, then that's very simple. You don't need to worry about anything. You simply just insert the SSD into your computer, and then you install Windows on that SSD. However, if you already have a computer, then it's a little bit more complicated. Now, depending on the SSD you buy, it may come with one of these, which is a little cable with a USB end, and then it comes with a little different end. Now, this different end simply plugs into your SSD. This is not an SSD, this is a 2.5 inch hard drive. Now, you simply just plug it in like so, and then you plug the USB end into your computer. And once you've done that, you can then transfer all the data across from your current hard drive onto the SSD. If you buy a Samsung drive, then this comes with some software, but if you look online, there are loads of different software, and I'll leave some in the description below, that you can completely transfer all your files from your computer onto the SSD. You may have too much on your computer to actually put on the SSD. You're either going to have to selectively put some stuff down, or you're going to have to delete some stuff to get it on your drive. If you have another external hard drive, then you can just copy stuff to that drive, and then copy your OS across to this drive. Once you've got one of these SSDs, what you need to do then is either get your laptop and computer and find where the hard drive is stored. If you're running a desktop, then what you need to do is you need to open it up by unscrewing the screws at the back, and then you'll find something like this, which is a hard drive cage. What you need to do, depending on the computer you have, is simply take out the hard drive cage and insert the SSD into the cage. As I said earlier, it may need an adapter. Then you need to plug it in with a SATA power connection as well as a power connector from your power supply. If you have a laptop, however, you simply need to find where the hard drive is stored. In this case, it's just here, and you unscrew the screws, and then it's fairly straightforward. The hard drive will just lift out, and you can place the SSD in. So now that you've copied your files across and installed your new SSD, you are pretty much ready to go. One word of advice is that if you're building a brand new computer with an SSD, you need to enable something on your motherboard called AHCL. 
Some motherboards have this enabled by default. I know ASUS motherboards usually do these days, but for example Gigabyte, they don't always do that. So you're going to have to go into your BIOS settings and enable AHCL rather than IDE. If you want to do more market research on an SSD, then the things you're looking for are sequential write speeds, sequential read speeds, and 4K random read. The faster these speeds, the better the SSD is going to be. So you can buy better ones and you can't buy worse ones, but you're really looking for that sweet price performance spot and that is really filled by the Samsung 840 and the OCZ Vertex 4 drives. So if you want to speed up your computer, you really need to get an SSD. You simply need to get your SSD, copy all your files across using some specialist software and then you just switch the hard drives over. And then of course you can use your current hard drive to put all your files on. Then you can use your current hard drive either as an external one if you're in a laptop or if you've got a desktop you can just add it to your tower and then you've got extra space for all your music and pictures and all the sorts of stuff that an SSD isn't really going to benefit you for. An SSD is really only going to benefit you for putting your OS on and putting any programs. So for example if I want to open up Microsoft Word, bam, it's done because it's on the SSD. Thank you for watching this guide to SSDs and I will see you next time.